I'm here with uh, Brian Blair. Welcome to Cleveland, and uh, congrats on uh, being AD for Toledo. Here for not even a year now. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, um, after multiple jobs uh, in being an assistant in the athletic department, uh, what's it like to finally be an athletic director? Yeah, it's a dream come true in so many ways, right? I, I've been working towards this since I was in law school. In law school, a light bulb went off. I could combine a law degree with working in sports. I was a college student athlete. And bringing those worlds together is really cool. So every day, every job I've taken has been with that thought in mind of trying to get to that level. And so sometimes I had to pitch myself a little bit and say, wow, you're finally here. Wow, you're finally having this conversation while you're really in charge. Um, so it's been fun. It's been a dream come true. And to do it at a place like Toledo, that's so special to me and my family, um, is even sweeter, right? I, it's not only in my AD, I get to be an AD two hours from my wife's family, two hours from all the cousins and family that get to see my kids grow up, and at a place that's had a long time history, high level success, and I get to build on top of that. So it, it's special for a lot of reasons. So I'm actually glad you mentioned that. Uh, you know, a lot of your career, you were down south when you played, I believe. Uh, you've been uh, at Rice, I believe that's down, that's in Texas, I believe, Rice. Right? And you've been in Washington State. Now you're in Toledo, so you have ties to the Toledo area. I was going to ask what what brought you to Toledo, but you kind of answered it. Yeah, it, it's too it's too broad. Personally, it was a great fit. I've got two young children. They've never lived around family, so to be two hours away from my wife's family and an hour and 15 minute flight from my family in mm -hmm. South Carolina is a dream come true. Just being on the time zone, on the same time zone. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I think professionally, I wanted to go somewhere where I knew and felt strongly that I could have a high, high level of success. I want to dream big. And so I wasn't going to go to a place that I had to taper down my dreams or maybe say, okay, we're going to just be okay. I believe we can be great at the University of Toledo. Yeah. That's my plight. And everything I've seen from the outside looking in told me I could. Now that I'm here, once a week, I found out something that makes me say, holy cow, this is a better situation than I even thought it was originally. Mm -hmm. So that fuels me every day because I get more and more excited about this job the more I learn about not only all the great things that have been done, but all of the great things to be done mm -hmm. that we can do going forward. So you have a bachelor degree in history, uh, and then you have a law degree as well. Uh, usually when people are becoming AD, they're either in education or they are in sport management. When did when did that become the goal to be an AD? And would, did you take an unconventional path or did you just take a different road to being an AD? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's unconventional because it, the way it happened was I was in law school and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I knew I could be a lawyer, but then the question was, okay, can I work in sports? And I started to notice there was a way to combine sport with my law degree because I started seeing conference commissioners, NFL team presidents in the 80s with law degrees. And so a light bulb went out, boom. I've seen a couple of people do that. That would be ideal for me to be able to use my legal skills, whether it be governance, contracts, negotiations, analytical thinking, but at the same time, also get to combine my love for sport, my passion for being a student athlete. So that light bulb went off, and I've been plowing ahead ever since. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about the position in AD itself. Yeah. Um, so I learned uh, while I was in college, sport management, that the AD position has to do a lot of marketing. Uh, and there's a lot of people really don't understand how much marketing really comes yeah, in yeah. Uh, to being it. So uh, now that you're at the helm, uh, what are some of the uh, marketing decisions or plans uh, that you plan to elevate there at Toledo? I, I think for me, and this, and this is one of my, the most fun parts of the job, mm -hmm. um, that opportunity to engage and think about our fan base and experience. I want to think about that door-to-door -door experience. How do we make that as flawless as possible? From the moment you pull out of your driveway to the moment you pull back into your driveway, everything in between, have we thought through how we can make that easier and more likely mm -hmm. that you'll want to do that. People have a lot of opportunities to spend entertainment dollars. I think that's especially true in Toledo. When you're in a major metro and you get a chance to spend money in a lot of different ways. So we've got to make that experience the best that it actually can. And that's from the bathroom to the concessions to the private role field. So working with our fans and listening to our student athletes, our students, on what they want to see. I think sometimes it's just listening more than it is making decisions. But I want people to be engaged. Mm -hmm. I want them to get something they can't get sitting on their sofa at home. I want to make that experience flawless. And I want to make it uniquely us. Mm -hmm. We're not going to try to be a Big Ten school that's in the neighborhood or anybody else. We're trying to recreate their experience. I'm not going to, I don't even have a high to die in Toledo, right? And so I'm going to focus on how can we be uniquely Toledo mm -hmm. and build an experience that almost like a minor league baseball philosophy. It's a whole lot of fun, a whole lot of marketing like we don't keep score. 
Because I believe when we market like we don't keep score, market like there's no winners and losers, when we do win, that's just the cherry on top. Because mm -hmm. we've already built a base and loves going to our games and having a lot of fun. So that's, that's a little bit about my philosophy more to go. I love how the comparison with minor league baseball, uh, because they get people in the door whether they're winning or losing or what the record is. That's awesome. So my follow-up to that is, uh, do you plan on marketing to a national audience? Or are you mainly focused about the Toledo area yeah. when it comes to marketing? I, I think from a marketing standpoint, Butts and C's, we're going to focus around our radius and people that can drive in to see our games. We've got a tremendous number of alumni in the Toledo area that we can pull from and get to come back to games. we got to do a better job of that. On the national scale, I'm focused on telling our story. Mm -hmm. We've got a tremendous brand. And I don't think people quite understand nationally all that's been done here and all the possibilities. I didn't, from afar, I didn't truly appreciate. When I walk into Savage Arena and I look at that facility and I look at the loaches and the suites and I say, holy cow, Lord, how did I not know about this? This is better than half the back close schools I was competing against. Two, how do we tell that story as we recruit the coaches, as we recruit staff, student athletes, telling that story more so to the national brand. I think Maction does that a little bit in football. Mm -hmm. People know and they see us on a Tuesday or Wednesday night. How can we take that next step in our evolution and have the entire country take up, stand, notice, and pay attention? So that's wins and losing, right? Mm -hmm. If we win at a high level consistently, championships and, and basketball, football, and those sports, mm -hmm. but also how do we proactively tell our story, particularly in a digital media format, we want to double down on that. So you dipped into it a, a little bit. So my next question is, when, he, when when fans look at that rocket, when they see the Toledo Rocket logo, what do you want them to feel? What do you want them to think in an image perspective when, when people see the Toledo Rocket? Yeah, I think it's a little bit based on what perspective you're coming from, right? Mm -hmm. If you're another Mac student athlete, I want a little bit of fear and trepidation and respect. <laughs> um, that, hey, I'm about to strap it up with Toledo. I better make sure I have my helmet's buckled on tight, or my shoes are tied up tight, my basketball, whatever it may be. Um, if you're a fan, I want a, a, a proudness to come about you because you're proud to be associated with that. Mm -hmm. If you're from Toledo or you grew up in Toledo or you went to Toledo, I want you to be really, really proud of the program that we put on the field. If you're a potential student, you're a high school student, I want you to have curiosity. Mm -hmm. I want you to be curious about what is Toledo, what's on that campus, how can I be a part of that, do I want to be a part on it, I want to learn more. So it's a little bit on your vantage point, mm -hmm. but I, I think we can hit all those notes appropriately. Awesome. That's a great answer. Um, a few more questions with the with the um, with brand. Um, so, what do you think your biggest task at Toledo will be for the coming years? Yeah, I, I think our biggest task, our biggest goal, our biggest impediment is teamwork. And it's one of those phrases that everybody uses and talks about, but very few people truly pull it off in a major way. And so, if we can get our campus our athletic department and our community within the Toledo area all the lock arms and pull together, we can do some things that will blow people's minds. But teamwork's tricky. Everybody talks about it, few people truly execute it at the highest level. So that's my job. I've got to make sure we are a team beyond measure. And this campus, this community, and this athletic department are all speaking the same language and all pulling it a lot. So let's talk about NIL, because yeah. everyone wants to talk about it these days. And with it coming around, the college landscape has changed a little bit. So with the era of collegiate sports, with the NIL, what are some of the advantages, but also the disadvantages of being a MAC school during the NIL era? Uh, I, I think from an advantage standpoint, our visibility, especially when you look at ESPN and our, our platform and the visibility of our games. I mean, I was in Pullman, Washington, checking out Toledo games, but I've got ESPN 3, so I can virtually watch everything. Mm -hmm. And we at Toledo do a great job of broadcasting those mm -hmm. games. Um, so there's advantages there in terms of building your brand. I think brand association, being associated with the Toledo Rockets brand for our student athletes is the usual. We have a collective um, that started, that, that, that's helping out in the NL space. And again, we've got the biggest metro in the, the, the conference. And so with that, the business opportunities that exist, we don't have a professional league from the, the NFL or NBA or NHL ranks in our city. So there's some opportunities for our student athletes to engage. I think from a weakness is that the only one I would e even bring up is the fact that we need our supporters to do an and proposition, not a or proposition. If, if you got to choose between supporting Toledo or buying a suite or buying a season ticket, or you're going to give to an NIL group or sponsor NIL sponsorship, 
we don't need the or, we need the and. So all the revenue we have is to put on that experience for student athletes, and quite frankly, pay our base level bills. So we need everybody to step up and say, hey, I want to do the and. I want to support the athletic department, I want to buy season tickets, sponsorship suite, and I want to give some money to NIL mm -hmm. to support whoever that student athlete will be. So mm -hmm. if we can do that and proposition, it will be a really good show. I, I, I like that a lot. Uh, just a few more questions yep. for, you, for, uh, for you here. Um, so, um, do you think a single player brand for like the NIL, so when a player kind of increases their brand, do you think that can help the Toledo brand as well? And if so, how do you plan to kind of increase the player and the overall brand of the institution? I, mean, I think so. it, goes, it goes both ways. I think when we've had success or our historic success and brand notoriety, when you pair that with a student athlete, I think we increase their brand value. And also when they perform well, when they have a big game or they go out and do something special or they invent something or perform, they increase our brand. And so it's kind of a, a, a dance that we do as a relationship between the two. Um, but I certainly want our student athletes to be able to leverage our brand, leverage their time here into future success. Mm -hmm. My hope is that a lot of our young people take NIL and use it as an opportunity to build on their current brand. So life after football, baseball, soccer, whatever it is, they've got a landing pad for success, whether that be an entrepreneur, whether that be networking with alumni, other kind of things. I think there's some unique ways to use NIL to set your life up in a unique way mm -hmm. that I'm not sure we're talking enough about. Okay, that's awesome. Um, so Toledo has put a great resume together of NFL players. Uh, Kareem Hunt in Cleveland, Deontay Johnson uh, there in Pittsburgh. Um, what do you plan on implementing in the program to show recruits that they can't just make it to the NFL, but they can succeed at a very high level? Yeah, I mean, I, and I don't know that I have to show much other than just continue to tell that story. We talk a little bit about from national branding piece. Like, I'm not sure most people understand that the 2017 um, Pro Bowler was a rookie from Toledo, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Chester Taylor, all he did in the NFL, or, or, or I could go through countless names, I'll get myself in trouble. <laughs> I had uh, a dinner with Cream Hunt last night, and okay. we talked about your, his Toledo experience, what it was like, why he chose Toledo coming out of Cleveland. I mean, he had lots of opportunities. Mm -hmm. When I high school, he had some Big Ten programs come around late, but he chose to go to Toledo. You see a young man have a high level of success, battle some injuries, and then he's a pro bowler in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And now he's working on, I think, his second or third contract. Yeah, so he's got longevity. Yeah. Right? And so when you look at that, when you look at Brian Rollins going to Golden State Warriors this year mm -hmm. in men's basketball in the second round, everything you want. I think we're the only match school this year to have a player drafted in the baseball, NBA, and NFL yes. drafts. It's special. Mm -hmm. And that means our coaches are doing a great job of identifying and developing talent. That also means Toledo's a place where you can be your absolute best in every aspect of what you're doing. That is really important to me. We gotta start telling that story even more so than we are now. So I want the nation to start hearing about what we're doing. So, you know what, you basically just answered my uh, next question. You've been doing that this whole interview, which is awesome. Uh, so, do you have a, uh, did you say you have a personal relationship with Kareem Hunt where you, you met with him yesterday? Yeah, we I believe, just met right? yesterday. Yeah. yeah. So, do you have a relationship with other athletes from Toledo as well that have graduated and succeeded, uh, like Deontay Johnson or uh, any of the players from the uh, that have been drafted to the MLB or to the NBA? Do you have a personal relationship with those athletes? We're growing that, we're growing that relationship. Okay. I'm still young in my career. I've placed phone calls to some of them. Andrew Hawkins and I talked to him on the phone, Lance Moore. Um, I've gotten to know a handful of those players. Mm -hmm. And just start to understand okay, why did they come here? What was their experience like? What about Toledo allowed you to have the success you're having at a high level in the NFL? So we're growing those relationships just as I have with our entire staff, our coaches, everybody. Uh, two and a half months in, ask me that a year from now. Hopefully we're best buddies. Because um, <laughs> those guys had a high level of success. We're really proud of them. I want them back around this program to meet our current student athletes and future student athletes and talk about what can be accomplished as a rocket. And uh, la last two questions here for you. Uh, what are you looking forward to uh, the most this season? That first game, that first football game. We play on a Thursday. We move the game to Thursday. Um, students will be in class. They'll be excited to be there. Uh, Jason Candle and his team, I'm so fired up to watch them play. Um, the Quan fan, every time I go to a football facility, he's in there watching film. Last time I went in there, he had a VR headset on. <laughs> so I, I just think about watching them run out that tunnel the first time and watching our fan base. And I've heard so many stories about our fan support, our tailgating, the atmosphere on game day. I'm just really excited. I mean, I, I love all our sports, but I played football, so I, I just yeah. have a special connection there. Mm -hmm. And so to experience that first game and support our student athletes, I, I just, I, I'll be over the moon that day. I'll be floating a cloud down. That's awesome. 
Uh, so last question. Um, so uh, a lot of people that uh, read or watch Keon Sports, a lot of them are college students and uh, in sport management. Um, and uh, I was a sport management major here in the local Cleveland, Ohio area. A lot of them want to be ADs. What advice do you have for young college students that want to be an AD, but kind of don't know how to get that started for themselves? Yeah. Ask a lot of really good questions and meet as many people as you can. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I, it took me a while to learn that. But I think once you start getting into this industry and you realize you can get advice from anybody and learn from anybody, so just start reaching out. It's a very collegial industry where nine times out of ten, if you email or call somebody, they're going to pick up the phone and want to talk to you, or at least tell you a time that they can't talk to you. And so get a hold of those people, learn their backstory, ask them questions about how they got there, and then start figuring out, okay, you said this, you did this, that person did this, this is my path, this is my play, this is where I want to go with my career, and build on that. I mean. We've got more information at our fingertips than ever via cell phone. So you can Google just about anybody, you can look at all these backgrounds. Just be really curious. Ask a lot of questions, do a lot of research. And figure out, okay, where do you think your strengths and weaknesses are? What interests do you have? Because if you're passionate about what you're doing, not just sports, but the, the, the silos within sports, find something you're passionate about, you'll be 10 times better at it. All right, that's all. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your time. Good luck as you uh, you get closer to the ending your first year here. Um, but uh, congratulations on the Toledo job, and uh, welcome to Cleveland. Absolutely. Thank you. Go Rockets.